looks like it's going to work with me today. Sometimes when we try to cast, we have issues yeah. getting it casted. So that's why I wanted to pop on a little early and see if we yeah. on. Okay, and good for you. People. All right, it looks like we are live on Facebook. There's Deborah. I'm going to promote everybody to panelists so that they can speak to you. Um, okay. If they have any questions, I'm also going to be watching Facebook. And if we have any questions on there, um, I'll let you know as well. Okay. Super. Do you do you prefer if we hold questions until the end or? Yeah, yeah they... that's okay. Cause I've got a lot of content to cover. And then maybe at the end, you can just read off the questions and I'll give you some answers. I think that works. I've tried it both ways. And it seems like it flows a lot better if I wait till the end and you help sure. me with the questions. That'd be great. Yeah. We'll just wait a few more minutes. Guys, if you're on Facebook, if you'll join us in, I will promote you um, so that you can see what's going on. Ah, hey, Matt. <laughs> Hello buddy, there. My buddy, Matt Kern. Mm -hmm. Mr. Happy Sullivan. Monday. Happy Monday, my man. Where's your video picture? What's that? At? I don't see I see an icon. Of I don't see your face. Hmm. Let's see. Share screen. Maybe. Uh, where can I do that here? Oh, start video. Gotcha. Hi. There you How's go. that? There I, you I go. mean, the, 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 I the, the, if you the other might have been better, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, where did you get that illustration? Turn it back off. Turn it back off. Yeah, that Super S is amazing. That's a new yeah. one. Golly. That's pretty cool. Check out you got the your Texas. truckers headphones yeah. on today, buddy. Yeah. I, I think I'm gonna quit wearing them because I, I swear I'm losing my hearing because I've been on all these Zoom calls with these things. And uh, you know, my ears are starting to ring. I'm like, what the hell? You know? And so uh I think I'm gonna get maybe get one of those microphones and use the speaker off of my MacBook or something because I can't be losing my hearing over this stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? Did you say something? I did. What? <laughs> what? Right? Yeah. I'll put out a chat to everybody today. Just keep saying what. Every time he says something, just put a chat in there. What? 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 <laughs> Gosh, I gave a presentation to uh, a group out in Houston last Friday. Man, they're sure hurting out there. With the oil and really? gas market, yeah, oil and gas, you know, oil and gas market oil is gas. Uh, tanking. Sucking eggs right yep. now. Yep, yep. This is where you we need to be going to Houston and West Texas, and uh, with a lot of cash and buying up all their RVs and toys because they're going to be selling them pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, these guys were. They were. They were all. I think there's over 100 people on there, Matt. Yeah, they were all displaced because of a you know some oil and gas company that had laid them off it was pretty crazy yeah that's, that's not good one. Mm -mm. i said move Did to you dallas uh-huh yeah i gave them a good presentation connected with them and sent them all a bunch of goodies and to help them with their you know them create their own brands i talked to half a dozen of them just to because they couldn't figure it out and it was actually called the harvard business school group and so they're all harvard graduates you know so uh they were all senior executives and I felt bad for, you know, cause you know, they have big mortgage payments, you know, <laughs> I felt really bad yeah. for them. All right. We got a couple people coming in here. We do have a few people on Facebook as well. Okay. All right. Give it one more minute and then I'll introduce you and you can take it away. Okay. Thank you, Diana. All right, it's right at noon. Anybody on Facebook, if you'd like to jump onto the Zoom, I'll admit you 
um, as soon as you come in. I do want to take a moment to introduce our guest speaker. It's Terry Sullivan. He's the founder of BuzzPro, a nationally recognized integrated marketing and social media training company that helps companies and professionals get their results with LinkedIn. Terry shows his clients how to fill their sales funnels with better leads, schedule more appointments, and close more sales using advanced LinkedIn branding and social selling strategies. Widely considered a guru in LinkedIn, Terry has trained more than 6,200 business leaders, owners, and individuals across the nation on how to create a unique online brand that gets results. His inspiring training programs focus on keyword optimization, branding, and social selling strategies that help his clients tap into the unlimited world of social media to get more prospects, leads, and clients. In today's presentation, Terry will walk you through the key branding and social selling strategies, tips, and secrets that you need to create a well-branded LinkedIn profile to get results. Let's welcome Terry. Hey, thank you so much, Diana. Thank you so much for having me. And Matt, thanks for in setting this whole thing up and uh, inviting me as well. It's an absolute honor to be here. I'm going to share my screen now, Diana. Make sure uh, you can see that now. Do. Okay. And you can see that now, correct? Sure can. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. And so here's a core things I'm going to cover today. Uh, you know, LinkedIn's quite a bit different than Facebook or Instagram. And so we're going to cover, I'm going to cover a lot of the nuances of how to create a brand and then also how to mine for prospects using advanced social selling strategies. And uh, if you would hold your questions off to the very end, write them down and Diana's going to help me kind of answer all your questions. And then if you like, have other questions that we don't really tackle, you can uh, just reach out to me directly uh, on LinkedIn or give me a call. So I'll help you in any way, but we're going to cover how to create a well search optimized profile today. I'm also going to talk about what a brand is and, and how to make that happen on LinkedIn. And again, it's strategically different than on Facebook or Instagram. It's a little bit more on the professional side. And then I'm going to talk to you about how to use social selling, uh, which is strategically different than social media. And it's a little bit more deliberate, a little bit more, um, you know, uh, intentional. But at the same time, it is a social media platform. So it is like social media, but it's a little bit more deliberate. But we're going to talk about how to become an active LinkedIn user and how to network and create engagement in just 15 to 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. You don't want to spend a lot of time on this application. You know, I'm the founder of BuzzPro. I give over 130 presentations, uh, even more now with Zoom uh, around the country. Absolutely love my job. I've been doing this since 2010 and absolutely love it. These are some of my clients. I've worked with a lot of real estate agents and companies as well. But you can see currently I'm working with the chief agile officer with Toyota Connected, a really interesting guy from England named Nigel Thurler. You know, I've worked with Transamerica. You can see who I've worked with here. A lot of, a lot of great companies. Uh, before COVID hit, I was traveling quite a bit, but now I'm working from my my office here. So why LinkedIn? You guys have all seen, uh, you know, you guys are all on LinkedIn, hopefully, but every second click, click, there's two new users signing up for LinkedIn. And you can see that we're over a half a billion users on LinkedIn worldwide. And it's the first place that people go once they meet you and you network it with people and they meet you. It's one of the first places they go to find out more about who you are, what you do and how you can help. You know, so why should you use LinkedIn? Just like you use your digital phones to find a place to eat or to you know, do business with someone or maybe find a Home Depot. You know, that's exactly what your key contacts and prospects are doing. They're going to LinkedIn to find out more about you, to learn more about you uh, before they even pick up the phone and call you or, or send you an email or contact you. So you wanna make sure, and if you're taking notes, write this down, you wanna make sure that your online, your, your online brand, what you tell people about who you are, what you do and how you can help is the same as your offline brand, right? So your online brand needs to match your offline brand. And we're gonna talk a lot more about branding in just a second here. So what's social selling? Social selling, if you're taking notes, write this down. Social selling is all about finding, connecting, and developing relationships with your key contacts and prospects. So it's it's a little bit more deliberate, you know, like social uh, social media is kind of like throwing a party, right? If you're gonna throw a party, you wanna make sure you invite the right people and uh, have the right food, maybe even a band and have a whole bunch of fun and get people to come back over and over again, right? That's the whole idea. Uh, social selling is more like going deep sea fishing where the ultimate goal of your efforts is to land that fish, right? That's kind of what social selling is all about. So then over 90% of the decision makers in this particular survey that I've listed here, 
So they don't buy from cold calls anymore. You used to be able to pick up the phone and call people. I'm going to show you how to turn a cold call into a warm call with my social selling pro process. But before I go too much deeper into that, let me just talk a little bit about privacy settings and what you want to make sure you do before you start doing uh, too much in LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you shut your visibility off as much as possible. And so what you want to do is go into the me tab here and you want to go into settings and privacy and then click on privacy right here. So the first thing I want to tell you is that, you know, you want to make sure that you, you know, you shut your public profile visibility off. Uh, on LinkedIn, you actually have two profiles. You have a regular LinkedIn profile and you have what we call a public profile. And a public profile is what people see when they do a Google, Bing or Yahoo search and they're not logged into LinkedIn for whatever reason. And you come up, this is what they see. And what you wanna make sure you do is come over to this little switch right here and make sure you, who's, you know, your public profile visibility. You wanna make sure that this is shut off and you can see on the left this is what they'll actually see and the reason you want to do that is because if you're making changes you got a new title you're adding photos you don't want to bombard people with messaging and and brand uh this is branding seeing branding elements and what have you so shut that off and then when you're done make sure all of these are turned back on right and make sure you change this to public right so th and then you have to back out of this there's a couple others i want to really talk to you about um, viewers of this profile also viewed right here uh, you may have uh, seen a profile, maybe you look up a CFO or maybe you look up, you know, a, a, a prospect and uh, let, let, let's say you're trying to find a, you know, a, a, um, a, a COO, a chief operating officer on LinkedIn. And if this feature is turned on for that COO, there'll be 10 other people out to the right hand side that are just like the person you looked up. So, and if this feature is turned on for you, there'll be 10 other realtors out on the right hand side of your profile page. You never, ever, ever want to give anyone a reason uh, to leave your brand. Make those competitors go away. Viewers of this profile also viewed, make this a no and keep it on note. And I, if, if you reach out to me, and uh, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn, or even if you're already connected with me on LinkedIn, and just have me send you my privacy settings uh, document. I will detail every one of these things that you should shut off and then turn back on. But these are the big hitters here. And then the other big one that you need to shut off, it, which is very, very important, it's called sharing profile, job share, you know, it's, the, the, it's called the sharing option here. If this feature is turned on, and you make changes to the title of your position, your current position as a realtor at your current company there in Denton, um, <clears throat> you will alert all your first level connects and, and potentially, and potentially uh, send an, an algorithm will potentially send out a message wanting to know uh, for, on your behalf, uh, we're asking your first level uh, connects uh, if they should congratulate you for your new job, right? So make sure job share job changes right uh, this whole feature right here is shut off i leave this feature off all the time because i don't want to alert people uh, when i've made changes to my profile so that's uh, those are the big hitters here uh, there's a couple others if you want to uh, review and look at other people's profiles and you don't want to know them to know you're checking them out i call this my stalking feature like maybe there's a potential prospect that you're going to talk to but you really don't want them to know that you're checking them out you can change this to anonymous linkedin user and in which case they can't see that you checked out their profile or maybe it's someone you used to work with or a competitor or what have you so those are two or three options there's there's actually 14 things i would recommend that you change uh, again, please reach out to me and I'll send you my privacy settings summary. I, I put a lot of details into that in terms of what you should turn on and turn back off. Okay, so that's pretty much it for privacy settings. I'm going to go right back here uh, to this summary page right here. Uh, okay, now <clears throat> I am going to go right back here. Now that's privacy settings. So then also Concerning your profile brand, uh, you know, the way you get to your profiles, you click on your photo in the upper left hand cor corner or view profile in the me drop down. But you can see here, uh, this is my profile summary page. And um, everything in my profile summary page just collapsed, right? See where it says see more here. So what you want to do is you want to motivate people to click on uh, the see more feature and learn more about you. So the way you do that is put your branding headline or some you know, your brand, you know, who you are, what you do and how you can help put your brand a couple sentences right up front so people know within seconds who you are, what you do and how you can help. And when they click on see more, right, this is what they'll see. This is your summary section. So there's a few things I want to tell you 
uh, about this summary section. Number one, uh, you guys are not applying for jobs. You're trying to get clients, right? So you want to write your summary section on LinkedIn in first person. You do not want to write your summary section in third person. A thir third person uh, resumes are written in third person. You guys aren't applying for jobs. You want to find clients. You want to start connecting with them, and you want to start developing rapport uh, and, and, and friendship, if you will, with uh, you know a business relationship. You want to you want to get want them to want to get to know you better. So write this. You want to pretend as if you're talking sitting across from Matt. Mr. Kern on this phone and Matt goes, hey, tell me a little bit more about who you are, what you do and how you can help. What do you do for a living? And you want to that's how you want to write this copy in first person as if Matt has asked you, hey, who are you? Tell me a little bit more about yourself. And you can see there's five unique sections. I'm going to cover this in a lot more detail in just a second here. But again, two important points, right? Max this section out three, actually max this section out with 2000 characters. Put your story in there in first person. Number two, write this section in first person, right? Pretend as if you're talking to Matt and he asks you, what, who are you and what do you do? How can you help me? And then the last thing I want to tell you about, you know, social media in general, right? Just whatever platform it is, keep your writing short, you know, never any more than four lines of copy. I like to keep it three to four lines and uh, then go from there. So keep your paragraphs nice and short, write your summary section in first person. And I'll come back to that in just a second. The other thing is, is on a, you know, how, how to measure your success. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about, more about the, uh, you know, the uh, social selling index at the end of this presentation, but right up front, you should be setting a goal of three to five profile views per day. And I'm showing everything I'm showing you today is with the free version of LinkedIn. So, every, you know, you can do everything I'm, I'm suggesting you do today with free version of LinkedIn, but over here on the left, you want to see, uh, click on who's viewed your profile and write this down. If you're taking notes, you should be getting three to five profile views per day. Super, super important. And you can find out how many people viewed your profile by clicking on this 92 right here. Right. And then um, this will show you with the free version of LinkedIn, the last five people who have looked at your profile. You can see this person looked at my profile two minutes ago. Here's a CEO who I reached out and looked at my profile, who I sent immediately sent a connection request to because he's a prospect for me. And then Tavis, and then you see two people here, uh, two LinkedIn members. These people have viewed my profile in private mode, right? So we talked about that set privacy setting earlier where, you know, the stalking feature, if you will. Now I have two people that have checked me out and there's really just a couple of professionals that will look at your profile in private mode. And that is a competitor. Maybe they don't want you to check, uh, you know, they don't want you to, know, to know, you to know that they've checked you out or, you know, maybe it's a recruiter of some kind. So, you know, it's, uh, so again, you utilize that feature in your privacy settings if you want to, you know, do not want to be known for looking at someone's particular profile. But the point is, is you want to get three to five profile views a day. Uh, you can do that in the free version of LinkedIn by clicking on uh, who's viewed your profile in this previous page here, you know, who's viewed your profile and then come back over here. And you can see who they are, over what period of time they've looked at your profile, and then also over the last 90 days, uh, you know, uh, how many people have looked at your profile, which is a really cool uh, measurement of success here. So what's a brand? A brand is who you are, what you do, and how you can help, right? It's all about what you want people to know about what's different about you as a real estate agent or, you know, what 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 what's unique about you? You know, are you a staging expert? Are you, uh, you know, do you focus on custom homes or do you focus on, um, luxury homes or you know are you a relocation expert you know what are the what are the key things that you want to focus on and that's what you want to bring out in your branding headline and throughout your brand this is my branding headline here right and you can see i use very little uh, real estate for my title so if you have uh you know your title is you know real estate agent with keller williams denton um, you, you, you know, you want to change that. You can keep that there, but tell us a little bit more in your branding headline about who you are, what you do, and how, how you can help. What differentiates you as a brand? Um, <clears throat> so the other thing I want to tell you is that you want to also clean up your vanity URL. And let me just show you where you can, how, how to get to that. Okay. Okay. Let me escape out of this. Here we go. So your, uh, your, your number one searchable term 
uh, on the internet, right, uh, with, with LinkedIn is your vanity URL. You see that right here, it says your profile, right? This is your unique LinkedIn uh, e you know, website address. And when you first log in to LinkedIn and start an account, um, it puts a bunch of characters and numbers in here. But I wanna show you where to, where to edit this. Make it, uh, turn it into your first and last name. So you click on contact info, you click on this little pencil icon, and then right here, you click on profile URL, see this little guy right here, and this will take you to a page and right up here in the right hand corner, you click on this little guy right here, and this is where you change it. You simply just type it in right in this space right here. Again, get rid of special characters, uh, get rid of, you know, try to use your first and last name if, if at all possible. Uh, as you can see, I used my first and last name, it wasn't available. And so I put MBA at the very end. So that's another branding thing you can do. And also while I'm here, you know, make sure that you list your, you know, Keller Williams, you know, Denton um, website address here. If you have a unique website with them, that'd be great. Uh, put a phone number in here, make it easy for people to call you. Make sure your email address is evident as well. Um, a lot of people, they don't like to communicate on LinkedIn. You can't send very large files uh, on LinkedIn. So if you're trying to send contracts and that kind of thing for a home, and you're not going to be able to do it on LinkedIn, just that it's, it's not really all that effective. So also include your email address. And if you're on Twitter, um, that would be great if you can include that as well, your handle there. So, all right. So that's a couple of things. Again, include your phone number, your email address. Let me just give you some examples of some of my clients. And I realize some of these guys are with competitors and that kind of thing, but you can kind of see uh, exactly uh, how to create uh, a brand as a, as a realtor. And you can see there's gonna be some differentiation here. So you can see with Nicole, you know, she, you know, who she works for, and then strategic real estate advisor, creative solutions, residential buyer and seller representation, uh, client experience. You can see Lindy Chapman, I worked with her many years ago, but she has since moved up to the uh, Boston area, but she's all about relocation. So she you know, included a banner image up here that really bring, brings that out. And I don't know if, if you guys have heard of LinkedIn Live, it's kind of like Facebook Live and she's a big LinkedIn Live uh, person and does a lot of great interviews with people and talks about relocation and that kind of thing. And this is Blake Hollers, he's uh, up in Plano and he and his wife have a very successful real estate business. And you can see he's with Keller Williams there. And so, but you know, he's pretty simple, you know, Collin County real estate, Plano home, neighborhood expert, uh, KW realtor. Just so, so, you know, the thing is, is make your brand different, right? Don't just have a title and a company name. Tell people about who you are, what you do and how you can help. So let me give you a couple examples of, um, something, you know, a summary written in first person. So <clears throat> let me see here, I'm gonna try to do that. And my cursor is where, uh, here we go. So I'm just gonna go to Nicole, uh, the, the summary I wrote for her. And you can see that um, it's written in first person. I wrote it in first person. The first paragraph is who she is, what she does and how she can help. And she puts something, you guys are not applying for jobs, so you don't wanna put quantified success bullet points in here and how you accomplish something. You really wanna to speak to your audience in terms of what you do as a realtor and how you can help. But just super, 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 super important is make sure you have a CTA here, a call to action, right? So tell them, you, you know, you never ever sell on LinkedIn, right? If you start posting a bunch of properties in your newsfeed, people will unfollow you. It's all about finding people, connecting with them, developing rapport, but you can guide them to your website. You can guide them to connect with you on LinkedIn. And the, the, the cream to the cream opportunity is to get them to pick up the phone and call you. So make sure you have a CTA at the end of your summary section. And let me see, I think I've got another example here. Here's, um, I think I'll just go to Lindy Chapman here. Okay, and then in Lindy's summary, you can see it's a little different. Um, <clears throat> So what I did here is again, written in first person, nice short paragraphs, and she's all about you know relocation, right? So relocation specialist, and she included a CTA, you know? So just again, a slightly, a slightly different twist, but the stand, you know, the, 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 the rules are, in my rules, my suggestions, short paragraphs written in first person, have your 10 second elevator speech, who you are, what you do, and how you can help at the very beginning stay away from quantified success bullet points. You guys are not looking for jobs and you know, speak to your customer's needs, right? I like to ask a question and then give an answer. Uh, let me just show you mine very quickly. 
So if you go to my profile, you can see uh, <clears throat> in my summary section, I speak to my various target markets, right? Executives and companies and business professionals, but I ask a question and then I give an answer. So show people you know, you know how to help them find properties, that you know how to help them make that right decision. You know, are you struggling with trying to find a good location in the DFW market to, to land, you know, to buy a great home? Uh, are are you uh, trying to figure out whether or not to go with a three bedroom or four bedroom home? Are you looking for a specific school district? I can help you with that. And so, so that's you know, again, and then I uh, have a CTA or a call to action um, at the very end. So uh, the other thing uh, that's super important that in your experience section, right? You again are not applying for a job. What you want to do in your experience section is number one, make sure you link to the Keller Williams Denton um, LinkedIn company page. You have a great company. You guys have a great company page so they can learn more about your, your company. And then, but at the same time in your experience section, again, talk about what you do, right? How you can help them. Um, maybe include, you know, I like to include, I'm B2B, so I can include some of my clients in here, but, uh, you know, you might put a testimonial from one or two of your uh, clients that you've, you helped, uh, help them find a great home or sell a home, right? So, so uh, you increase what we call social proof when you uh, do that. And then I have not one, but two CTAs, right? So have a couple of call to actions to either direct them to your website or pick up the phone and call you. So I told you guys that your brand needs to be the same from offline to online. Your brand also, be, also needs to be consistent from platform to platform to platform. So if you're using Facebook and Instagram, uh, you know, make sure you use the same, I like to use the same banner image, the same, as much as branding headline as I can, same contact information, same name, as much as possible. Um, you know, just so people get used to land, you know, when they land on your social site, you know, your social platform, regardless of which one it is, they feel like they're at home, right? They feel like they've been there before, right? So make make sure your brand is not only consistent from offline to on online, to, but it's also consistent from social media platform to platform to platform. So the other thing you want to make sure you do is uh, develop a daily routine, right? And what I'm gonna do is show you here in my profile, what you wanna do on a daily basis, it's don't, don't spend more than um, you know 15 to 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. Get on it and get off of it, right? But what you wanna do is, <clears throat> see if I can find my pointer here. There we go. I hope I can, say I can. So what you wanna do at the very top here, and my pointer disappeared here. Okay, that's a first. All right, so you can see on the home tab, hold it just a second. Maybe I'm not gonna be able to do this. Just a second here. Try it one more time. Here it is, okay. So on the home tab here, you want to write this down. If you're taking notes, you want to like, comment, and share on one to three posts per day, right? Like, like, comment, or share, I should say, right? It's very much like Facebook. Uh, you want to get some visibility with those people you're connected with on a first level basis and try to, you know, uh, like and comment on things that are going to be of interest. It's a lot less, uh, it's a lot more formal, if you will, uh, on LinkedIn. If you put a lot of memes on here, if you post properties, people, may un you know, unfollow you, in which case they can't see any of your posts, or they may unconnect with you or block you, right? So it's a, it's a business platform, but definitely want to get in the habit of liking and commenting on a daily basis. And what I would suggest is once a week, you, sh you, know, you start your own post. In other words, grab uh, you know, an article from the Keller Williams um, Denton um, site on uh, your blog post and, you know, pop it in here and, and make a comment, you know, just bring it on in. But, but again, no more than once at the most twice a week, you know, otherwise people just will not pay that much attention to you. And just to let you know, you can write your own article, uh, it, articles if you'd like, if you blog on a regular basis, uh, one week after you post your blog content to your blog website, uh, you can bring in your banner image, your uh, headline, as well as the copy, copy and paste and, and drop it right in here. Now, I would suggest if you're going to repurpose your blog article like that, wait a week after you have posted it. Why is that important? Because the Google crawler works in such a way as if you post 
the blog article that you've posted on your website the same day as your LinkedIn publisher article here, um, what will happen uh, is that you won't get any SEO search engine optimization benefit out of it. So check out any articles that have come up. It says new post. You can see that little red dot with a, see how it disappeared? Get rid of the red, that little red uh, circle with a dot in it went away. So uh, that means I'm, I'm up to date with looking at all the articles in my newsfeed. Uh, check and see if I have anybody who wants to connect with me. And you can see I have Mary Beth uh, Gaffney here. And so I can I can open up her profile and I'll ch check it out and see if there's something, you know, it, it, I'll look to see if she's a legitimate business person. And if she is, I'll click on accept and, and send her a thank you note for connecting with me. I'm going to skip the jobs tab because now you guys are looking. But um, <clears throat> messaging, again, you can see I have one outstanding message here. And uh, what I like to do is click on this little hamburger menu right here and click on unread, right? And then that'll show me just those messages that I haven't read and I can tend to those, right? So, um, or, and I can get rid of that completely and look at all messages. So again, check your messages on a daily basis and then notifications, you know, it's um, LinkedIn's trying to get you to engage with people. So here's someone, uh, you know, Paul Whitley liked to post that I was in, these various people like to post. And I really look for someone who's made a comment. If someone has made a comment to one of the posts that I've created or someone's created on my behalf, um, you know, what I will do is uh, actually click on it. Uh, you can see this one is uh, mainly, a, I, I don't normally do this, but this is a meme. It's like when you support small businesses, you're supporting a dream. And this was uh, Kay Trotter. Uh, she's a psychologist here in Flower Mound. I really like her her content and I really, you know, it was a very positive message. And you see, I can, I, I, it's because it's a meme, I didn't get any comments, but I'm getting quite a few likes here. So, you know, again, you have to be a little bit more on the professional side uh, with LinkedIn. So the point is on a daily basis, you wanna go up here and, and uh, to these links up here and you wanna get rid of the red, go to your homepage. You see, look, there's a new red, there's a new post there. Now it just popped up as I'm talking, right? So I can go check it out. It'll say there's a new post right here. And I go up there and boom, there's a new post that someone created. Fanny Dunnigan, who's a friend of mine, she's a big uh, video expert like uh, Mr. Matt. And so um, at any rate, uh, so you get rid of the red, uh, check to, you know, like, comment, and share in one to three posts per day, or once, once a week, maybe twice a week, you want to post some new content on your newsfeed from your homepage. Um, check to see if you have anybody who wants to connect with you and accept or ignore all connection requests. And again, connect with legitimate business people. At the end, I can tell you what that's all about if you're curious, uh, you know, what I consider to be a legitimate business person, what my strategy is on that. And then uh, check messages and reply to all messages. And then also you want to uh, look at anybody uh, for anyone that's having a new job, a new promotion, or maybe they're relocating, or maybe some people are responding to your like your, your, your post and, and your comments and that kind of thing. So that's pretty much it for, uh, for that piece of the daily routine. Um, so you wanna get rid of the red and spend 15 to 30 minutes a day. The other thing is, is you want to find key contacts on, pro, uh, you know, on company pages, and on LinkedIn, uh, you can have uh, a LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can have a LinkedIn company page, and you can have, um, you know, a LinkedIn group. There's three things that you can do. And so, I'm going to look at one of my clients here. This is um, called a LinkedIn company page. Conix is one of my. They, they work with Fortune 100 companies, and I worked with them for many years. Uh, but you can see here, I'm going to do a search instead of for people, I'm going to search for, you guessed it, companies, Connex. And so here is their LinkedIn company page right here. And so I can go there and it tells me a lot of information about my client, you know, who they are uh, and what they, what they represent. I can click on the about page. And it, the great thing here is I can go to their website, see how many employees they have. It's a 501c nonprofit. And then... Uh, then I, the big thing here is there's a hunt, see all 108 employees on LinkedIn that uh, have Connex is listed in their experience section. 
So here I can connect with lots and lots of people that work at a particular company that I want to do business with. And so maybe um, you're finding out that a company is relocating a bunch of employees uh, to the Dallas-Fort Worth market from one of the other northeastern states. And so you could look at that company. You could see uh, what what uh, who the employees are that work there and start reaching out and connecting with some of them. Maybe you want to connect with someone in HR and talk to them about what's going on with their relocation activity. So pretty pretty interesting there. Um, so that's pretty much it for company pages. And then also the third thing I mentioned is that you can have LinkedIn groups. And you know LinkedIn groups uh, are, are very much like Facebook groups. And I would suggest you join one to three groups on LinkedIn where your you know, key contacts and prospects and clients are hanging out. But here's the big secret weapon. I'm gonna show you a big secret weapon with LinkedIn groups on LinkedIn that you don't get. Um, with a Facebook group. First of all, here's a, here's a LinkedIn group. This is a MPI Meeting Planners International. Um, they are one of my clients. Their world headquarters is in Dallas, and uh, you can see that you can see who you know. I can people who work there. Uh, there's 175 or over a thousand uh, you know members on MPI that I can invite to connect with me. Um, I can start a conversation because I belong to this group. Uh, you know, I can see what's going on in their world. Just a great, inf great place to find a lot of information about you know people in that that um, find this group of interest and that that belong to it and that are active on it. But I can also click here on about this group. I can click on see all, and here's the secret weapon, right? Uh, with groups that you don't have with um, Facebook groups. Um, on LinkedIn, you have to connect with people before you can message them. You know, it's kind of like Facebook. You kind of have to friend them before you can message them. But if you, on LinkedIn, if you both belong to the same group, um, you can direct message, check this out. You can direct message second and third level connects, right? So it's a, gr it's a great, you don't have to pay for a $10 in mail, which is what LinkedIn does. They have in mails, which cost a lot of money. But it's a great way if you both belong to the same group, you can connect with up to 15 people per month that belong to that group. It's a limitation that Microsoft set uh, not too long ago, but it's still a great feature. Why is that important? Let's say that you find out that um, that uh, <clears throat> you want to you want to do work with relocations and you want to connect with HR directors and VP. So you could join the Dallas HR group. Right, Dallas HR, and if they accept, if you belong to that group, you have a, hundreds and hundreds of HR professionals that you could connect with and start building rapport with, and possibly do some relocation work with them. So again, it's really important that you, you know, check out companies that you want to do business with, or where people that you want to help sell or buy homes work at. Uh, make sure groups that you join your top one to three groups. And uh, you know, and, and start sending out messages and connecting with people that are in that group, so you can start building rapport and start building a prospect base. You know, it's kind of how that works. All right, and then here's how you would do it: you just click on the message button, and here's the second level connect for me, who's an entrepreneur. They own they own their own companies, and I could send Bobby a message here. Super, 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 super simple. So the last thing I kind of want to tell you about is. You know, we talked about branding, right? And your brand is who you are, what you do, and how you can help. The other thing you want to do in just those during that 15 to 30 minutes, besides getting rid of the red, is you want to come up with a social selling strategy. And don't spend a lot of time on this, but start building your you know rapport with some key contacts and prospects. And here's what you here's here, here's how you do that. So what you want to do is you want to set this is called my 25, 15, and 10 social selling strategy. And I highly recommend you do this, whether you do this on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or a combination of all, right? On a daily basis, get in the habit of friending people on Facebook, connecting with people on LinkedIn, uh, you know, following people on Twitter, et cetera, connecting with people on Instagram. But what you want to do is you want to get in the habit of sending out 25 connection requests a week or five connection requests a week um, to your key contacts and prospects. So send out five connection requests a day right? 25 a week. I'm not saying get 25 uh, new contacts a week. I'm saying send out connection to requests, right? Five a day. Uh, and then the second thing is <clears throat> you want to, of those 25 that you connect with or, or that you send connection requests out to a week on a weekly basis, you, your goal is to connect with 15 or more of them. And not everybody is going to connect with you. Right, so um, just like you don't connect with any everybody, 
Uh, if you think about it, the type of people you don't connect with are people that you know are going to put a big sales pitch on you. You never sell on LinkedIn, right? Try to be a, you know, a servant leader, a helpful advisor. Try to help your community online uh, solve their problems with your unique expertise, right? That's how it works. So 25, send out 25 connection requests a week, and then you want to actually connect with 15 or more a week or three a day. And of those uh, 15 that you connect with, here's the thing is you want to have two, yes, two sales conversations or more a day. So you want to start the ultimate goal of LinkedIn is this is going to sound kind of funny. It's the ultimate goal of LinkedIn is to find people, connect with them, start building rapport. But then you want to get off of LinkedIn as soon as possible. Nothing happens until you start having conversations with your key contacts and prospects. As you guys know, that's where you do all your selling, your rapport building, uh, your referral based kind of conversations. So of the 25, 15 and 10 social selling strategy says you want to connect, uh, send out uh, five connection requests a day or 25 a week. You want to connect with 15 or more a week on a weekly basis. And you want to have at least two sales conversations a day or 10 a week. That's your goal. If you do that in a month's time, you will have connected with 60 new prospects and you will have had 40 sales conversations um, with your key contacts and prospects that you've connected with on social, right? And that will dramatically increase the probability of you landing uh, some new clients, right? Some new, new opportunities to sell or buy homes, right? So 25, 15, and 10 is your goal. Your so, the social selling strategy is a four step strategy. And if you're taking notes, please write this down. And as a matter of fact, um, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I'll send you not only information about my privacy settings, you gotta ask for it, but I'll also send you information about how to do Boolean searches, uh, you know, and, the, and the, how to implement a social selling strategy. I will send you uh, those details that you can use right away to start reaching out to future prospects um, and uh, so, so just reach out, but you have to ask, connect with me and ask me for it. And I'll be glad to do that. And then you, of course, you can also concerning the branding, download my LinkedIn tips document, and uh, I'll automatically send you a link to that when you connect with me on LinkedIn. So 25, 15 and 10 is your, is your goal. And uh, the actual social selling process is a four step process. And uh, step one of the four steps to social selling is you want to find your prospects, right? So to find your prospects, you want to use uh, these five Boolean operators and or not need to be in all uppercase. Pretty cool, right? So if you want to include two things, um, let me just show you how that would work here. Um, if So if I'm looking for, for example, I'll get this out of the way. If, if I'm looking for it, let's just use a Boolean search just to show you how it works. So let's say I'm in Flower Mound and I'm looking for, for um, I'm looking for Chinese or that's a Boolean operator, right? Um, Mexican food, right? Um, and in quotation marks, Flower Mound. Okay, so, um, or is a Boolean operator and I'm doing a Google search and it's a Boolean operator. It's a Boolean search term uh, operator. And, and also open and close quotation marks. That's a Boolean operator as well. So let's see how that helps me refine my uh, search results. So you can see here that it shows all the you know Mexican and Chinese restaurants in Flower Mound, and you know the best ten Mexican restaurants in Flower Mound, the top ten best Chinese. Uh, restaurants in Flower Mound. And you can use that same search process uh, on LinkedIn. Let's say I'm looking for a COO, right? Uh, and uh, I'm going to say COO just for the sake of discussion and in quotation marks, oil <clears throat> and gas, right? All right. And uh, so then uh, there's a bunch of COOs. Look at this COO, oil and gas, oil and gas. But now I want to focus in on a specific area. And I can say, you know, uh, Dallas Fort Worth <clears throat> pops up here. And then you can see, okay, in Dallas Fort Worth, I'm connected with 930. Now the results are getting to the point where I can start to manage them, right? So I wonder how many COOs. Uh, in the oil and gas industry I'm connected with already on LinkedIn. And I'm gonna start with there and start reaching out to those guys because they've known me for a while and there's 46. A beautiful example of how I can reach out to COOs, right? Um, 
COOs in the Dallas Fort Worth market who I'm connected with on a first level basis, who have seen my content in their newsfeed, who most likely I've talked to or they've seen me present. And you can do the same thing. You can use, figure out some key search, you know, what type of professional are you looking for? What type of business are they in? Um, you know, maybe they're an entrepreneur or maybe they're a chief financial officer or maybe they're in marketing or maybe they live in uh, the Flower Mound area or let's just say South Lake. Right. So just notice how South Lake is not a searchable term in, in the location drop down, but I can still put South Lake here. Right. And watch what happens. So I can say South Lake, and I have 57 people that have the word South Lake somewhere in their profile. They may, may belong to the South Lake Chamber of Commerce, they may belong to some other South Lake group, South Lake School System, whatever. But here's some people that I'm connected with on a first level basis that live in the South Lake area that I can reach out to and start networking with via LinkedIn. Okay, so that's an example of how you can use Boolean operators for, you know, to, to find people and companies that you want to do business with. There's five of them here. Again, I can send you uh, this information uh, if you'd like to learn more about it. I highly recommend you start using Boolean operators and Boolean searches, not only to find prospects, but use it on your digital phones to find uh, you know restaurants and everything else. So I, I use it several times a day. All right, so here's another example. If I'm looking for COO and Dallas, this time I just put Dallas up in the search field. And you can see, I, I got a really big number here. Look at this, 14,762. It's too big, it's, I can't manage it. So I can come over here in the all filters. Uh, I can click on this all filters link and that'll take me to this page right here, which is a real jewel, right? And all this is with the free version of LinkedIn. And I can now do a search for Second Level Connects, Dallas, Fort Worth, and COO. Same exact search, but now COO has to appear in the title uh, field, right? And so let's see what I'm going from 15,000 to 765. It's a much more manageable number. I can implement my 25, 15, and 10 social selling strategy and start connecting with 25 of these guys. Um, you know, sending out uh, 25 connection requests on a weekly basis or five a day. So, it's a, you know, you start using Boolean operators to find, connect, and develop relationships with your key contacts and prospects. And so step one is you want to find your prospects. Once you find them, here's someone I found. Here's a COO at Synergip, uh, Synerzip. It's a company here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. I can send him a connection request, right? And when I send him a connection request, you want to use... Um, personalized templates, right? So you want to only be on LinkedIn for 15 to 30 minutes a day. And I would suggest use templates, not only for LinkedIn, but any social platform that you use, because a lot of the messaging is the same. Once they connect with you, you always want to start building rapport and you want to send them, you know, in this case, um, I'm sending out connection messages, right? And this is a connection template. And you always, 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 um, you know, from this, you know, from this point forward, you want to personalize your messaging, but use templates to make things mainstream just so you're not spending a lot of time on social but do use templates to make your life uh, a lot easier make things uh, quicker if you will spend less time on social uh, but uh, but the point is is you have to personalize it and Matt I'm going to ask you you know you know have you ever gotten a connection request where they go hey Matt I looked at your LinkedIn profile and uh, you have a very interesting background uh, it would be great if we could connect on LinkedIn. And you know darn well, Matt, that they never e ever even open up, up your profile to take a look because they didn't detail any of the things that you do. You know, you're an inspector, you know, super inspector and who you work for and how you help people. So you always want to personalize your templates, right? And so look for, here's some ways you can do that. You can look for the same area of expertise, right? Maybe they are both in the same industry. Ref again, reference their title and company name. Uh, maybe you went to the same school. Hey, Matt, we both went to Texas State. Let's connect. So when you personalize your connection, these templates, your connection rate will go up significantly, right? Uh, maybe you read their blog, and I would comment that. One of my clients recently uh, read a blog article by CEO of Borden Milk, right? Uh, Borden the, the Cow, you might remember that brand. And the CEO that reached out and thanked him for my client for his comments and said, pick up the phone and call me. He had a discussion with the CEO of that company because he had referenced a blog article that uh, he had read that, that uh, new CEO to Borden's uh, had just uh, written. So maybe you met at a networking event, reference that networking event. Um, you know, so just again, try to put something personal in there um, so they will know that you've taken the time to check out uh, their profile and learn more about them. 
So step three is, step one is you wanna use Boolean operators to find your prospects on LinkedIn. Uh, you also can use those on Facebook and Instagram. Boolean operators work on Google searches. I demonstrated that to you. The other thing is from this point forward, whether someone friends you on Facebook, you know, connects with you, or, you know, uh, follows you on, you know, on Twitter, what have you, or uh, connects with you on LinkedIn on a first level basis, always, always, always send a thank you for connecting message with a gift. That's what I like to do. It really helps be the first to give in this world, right? So uh, when they connect with you, say, hey, Matt, thank you so much for connecting with me. I really appreciate it. I'm looking so forward to learning more about you and your uh, super inspector brand and business, uh, inspector inspecting business. Um, I, I, I you know, would love to, uh, I thought you might like to see an article uh, that I recently read or wrote about the state of the economy in the Dallas-Fort Worth market or about the state of the real estate business in the Denton area. You know, just some, you've read, you know, put a link, a gift to an article that your new prospect is gonna absolutely love. Or maybe it's a blog article you've written, maybe it's something you've written, but you know, attach something to that thank you for connecting note that they're gonna find of use and of help, right? Be the first to give, right? So that's step three, always, always, always send a thank you for connecting note with some type of gift, something that's gonna help them, right? And then the last thing you wanna do is you wanna take your online discussion offline. You need to pick up the phone and call people. And a lot of people, you know, you can, uh, they may not have their phone number listed on LinkedIn, but you can certainly look up their company where they work uh, doing a Google search. And you can um, you know, go to the contact link in that company page and dial the general number and then ask for them by first and last name. And about 70% of the time, if they don't have their name uh, number listed uh, in LinkedIn, I can usually get a hold of someone by doing an advanced Google search and then calling a main number and asking for them. Uh, there are some cases where the company's really, really big and it's more difficult, uh, in which case I'll go to LinkedIn, try to find people who work at that company and ask for an introduction. All right, so <clears throat> the last thing I wanna tell you is you wanna monitor your performance and here are some key performance indicators that you can track, such as your social selling index, which I'll talk a little bit more about in just a second here. Um, you know, people who are viewing your profile in the last 90 days, we talked about how many people are viewing your profiles. If you have an advanced version of LinkedIn, any of them, they'll show you the last um, uh, people, the, the people who have looked at your profile over the last three months or 90 days. If you have the free version of LinkedIn, it'll just see the last five, but you can monitor, you know, how many people, who are they, that kind of thing. Uh, your network size is a big one. Uh, you know, how many people, I have just over 18,000 first level connects, you know, and I try to, I don't really try to get more client, uh, more first level connects, I try to get quality connects. But if you're trying to grow your professional database, you might wanna see how fast that's growing. The big, the big deal there is you have to get over 501 connections as soon as possible. So you get the magic branding value of having 500 plus in your LinkedIn profile brand at the top there. So try to get over 501 first level connection. But after that, uh, even before that, you know, try to connect with quality con connects. That's really the thing. But you can look here uh, you know, uh, at some other things that you can track here. But again, try to you know, measure your performance. You know, what kind of uh, performance are you getting out of your social selling activity? And then the last thing I wanna tell you uh, is you can, uh, look at your social selling index. This is really a, a great, great metric that um, you can look at. Just look up, uh, just do a Google search for LinkedIn SSI score and very, very top there'll be a link that you can click on and see what your score is. And my, my score range is anywhere from 81 to 88, depending on, uh, I've never broken the 90 barrier, but um, some of my you know big sales, you know some of my clients are up 92, 93 range. But again, it's based on these four things. You know, have you established your brand? You know, um, you know, find the right people. You know, are you engaging with people? And then also, are you building relationships? And that's my number one goal there is to build relationships with my um, new key contacts and prospects on LinkedIn. So here's what we talked about today. We said you want to create a search optimized profile. Um, you know, make sure that you max out. Uh, your skills section with 50 terms. So let me go there very quickly to show you what that's all about. Hopefully I'll see a pointer here in a second. Yeah, there it is. All right. So I'm gonna go back to Nicole's and here's the keywords that I came up with for her. And, you know, uh, 
copying is 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 the highest form of flattery, right? So if these terms apply to you, you know, go to Lindy's uh, keywords. They're different than Nicole's. They both have different emphasis. But in the sk featured skills and endorsements section right here, you want to max this out with 50 terms, right? So there's 50 terms here. Uh, use strategic terms. Stay away from words like leadership and management because those have no strategic branding qualities whatsoever. And you know, please stay away from words like Microsoft Word and Excel. Name somebody you know who's not using a Microsoft product, right? So use words that are going to differentiate your brand. What I like to do is pin uh, my top three terms to the top, the three things, because this whole section here uh, is collapsed, right? It's collapsed. So uh, you can only see these three things unless they click on see more. So put your best foot forward, your top three things you want to be known for as a real estate um, professional. Um, and then the other thing I like to do is um, she's added some new terms here. You can see here life coaching. She added that. But uh, you want to put these terms that fall within these very subsections in alphabetical order, just so people can sort through them and, you know, endorse you for them and understand more about um, who you are, what you do and how you can help. So, again, max out your skill section with 50 terms. Look at Nicole's, look at Lindy's uh, profiles and then uh, pin your top three terms to the top and then place uh, these terms here in alphabetical order. Again, this will help with SEO, search engine optimization, and it also uh, helps with branding. So here's what we covered. We said create a search optimized profile, make sure you max out your skill section with 50 terms. Um, and then also you want to develop a very strong brand and your brand is who you are, what you do and how you can help. Uh, you know, it's uh, make sure you're not just using a title and company name at the very top. And you want to become an active LinkedIn user. Get rid of the red, right? You want to, uh, go, you know, accept connection requests. You want to like, comment, and share in one to three posts per day. You know, um, uh, if you have any outstanding messages, respond to those during that 15 to 30 minutes a day. And then, you know, look at um, to see, you know, who's got promotions and who's moving around you know, and, and start to just, you know, again, don't spend a lot of time, in, uh, you know, but get rid of the red, be active on LinkedIn. And then the last thing you want to do is make sure you implement my 25, 15 and 10 social selling strategy and start connecting with key contacts and prospects, you know, figure out who your market is, you know, look, what I would do is look at somebody for your previous, previous clients and figure out where they work, right? So if they work at uh, Toyota, right? Uh, start connecting with people who work up in Plano at the Toyota place and start getting introductions and start building rapport with those folks. You know, if that's a big market for you, um, if you're into relocations, you know, try to get in touch with HR leaders from various companies that you can help, uh, help them with their relocation activities. So again, you know, try different searches, find one that works and then dive into it very, very, very deeply. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. And when you do, I'll send you uh, a link to my uh, LinkedIn tips document, which will cover everything I've covered today. Um, then also, uh, if you would like it, once we connect, uh, ask me for my privacy setting summary, ask me for my Boolean search um, how-to document, ask me for my social selling uh, document. I'll be happy to send you all of that. Uh, they have examples in there, uh, 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 specific examples for real estate agents, et cetera. So just reach out to me and ask me for those things, but here's the deal, you have to connect with me first, okay? So thank you very, very, very much, uh, you guys. It's been uh, a pleasure to work with you. Um, I just, if you have any um, presentation referrals, you know, anybody who would love to have a great presenter and trainer, I would please appreciate it if you would uh, make an introduction and uh, get me some presentation gigs. I just absolutely love what I'm doing. So I am going to turn this back over uh, to Diana and uh, Matt, uh, and I'm gonna escape out of there. And, and Diana, if you could uh, maybe read any questions that might've popped up during my presentation, that would be great. I actually do not see any. I think you did a very thorough job. Um, <laughs> we've got several people watching in Facebook and I've also been watching the Zoom chat. Does anybody have any in the Zoom right now or or on Facebook as well? <laughs> no, I don't okay. see any questions. All right. 
I must have worn everybody out. That's a good thing, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys have any questions, please uh, reach out to me. Give me a call or connect with me on LinkedIn. And Matt and Diana, thank you so much. It's been an honor to uh, be on your your Zoom call today. And uh, please let me know if I can ever be of any help. I'd love to work with you guys. Thank you. We're hearing several people thanking you and saying what a wonderful job you've done. So. Thank you. I hope my, my wife says I wear out my audiences. So hopefully uh, it's time, <laughs> time for a glass of wine now or something, you know, <laughs> but uh, thank you, Diana. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Diana. Matt. very, very uh, nice uh, chatting with you guys today. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye now. Bye.